What's up, everybody? Welcome to Week in Review, episode number two. Pretty packed week this week. We have four movies, four games. Uh, the games are Batman the Enemy Within, episode four, Madden NFL 18, Wheels of Aurelia, and Jump Jet Rex. On the movie side, we have The Greatest Showman, Pitch Perfect 1, Pitch Perfect 2, and Pitch Perfect 3. We'll also cover some limited edition donuts. Look forward to the week's new releases. And there's even a special musical guest. We'll kick off this week's episode with the uh, game side of things. First game we'll talk about here is Madden NFL 18. Play this game mostly for achievements. It's Madden. You're going to like it if you like it. You're not going to like it if you don't like it. The bonus part is Aaron Rodgers' butt looks fantastic, so there's that. Um, I unlocked, let's see, 22 achievements for about 585 gamer score, and I'm looking forward to trying out the long shot mode, which I'm hoping to have impressions of next week. So keep an eye out for that, but, you know, it's Madden. We'll keep the game stream rolling here with Jump Jet Rex, cute little dino platformer that has a progression system that does not work for me. Each level in the game has three, uh, three challenges that you need to complete. Each challenge grants a star. You need to have a certain number of stars to unlock future levels. That's a progression system I do not like at all. I don't want to ram my head against the wall trying to get one challenge done to unlock a level where I'm going to have to ram my head against the wall to get other challenges. That just doesn't work for me. I know that probably sounds a little bit dramatic, but it was an Xbox Game Pass download, so it was worth a shot. The game's super cute. Yeah, it's just it's just not a game for me. I unlocked four, gamer, or four achievements for 45 gamer score, and it's probably going to stay that way. The third game this week is Wheels of Aurelia, a game that has light decision making and is just you driving and having a conversation with various people in your car. Uh, the playthroughs are super short, they're 15 to 30 minutes depending, which makes it easy to experience all 16 endings. The big problem with this game is it's not terribly interesting and there's not enough variety in the decision making to warrant or push someone like myself to play through the game 16 different times, regardless of how much I love gamer score. I got 10 achievements out of this game for about 330. It might go up, I might kind of tinker around with this knock through ending J or H or whatever, but it very easily and probably will stay at the 330. Fourth and final game this week is Batman The Enemy Within Episode 4. The series is finally starting to tie up some of its loose ends. I think episodes 2 and 3 took a little bit too long with the overall story of it. But there have been some really, really tremendous moments with Bruce Wayne and John Doe. John Doe has been the best part of the series, and that goes back to the last season as well. I'm very excited to see where they're going with Episode 5. I'm hoping to be surprised. I think I know where they're going with it. But I will be amazed if they stick with the storyline they've picked for John Doe. Because it's very, very interesting. This is typical Telltale. You're going to get your 6 achievements for 200 gamer score. You're going to make your dialogue decisions. You're going to make your tough choices. But it doesn't really matter because I was enjoying playing the game. And I think the final 20 minutes or so are really, really, really terrific. I'm very excited for episode 5 and to give you my final thoughts. Switching gears to movies this week, we're going to start with The Greatest Showman, which is a movie that I'm very, very surprised that I enjoyed nearly as much as I did. I'm not typically a fan of musicals, but this had great songs that stuck with me well after the credits, including the best song of the movie, Rewrite the Stars. Now I know what you're thinking, but Sean... This Is Me, that got the Academy Award nomination for Best Original Song from this particular film. Well, the Academy, shockingly, got something wrong, because they suck and did nominate the Lego Batman movie for Best Animated Feature when they should have, but for some reason, they nominated The Boss Baby. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Academy? You goofed up that one? You goofed up Best Original Song? It should have been Rewrite the Stars. But I digress. I'm still listening to the soundtrack, which is a big surprise to me as well. Aside from just the songs being fantastic, the choreography is great, cinematography is great, and performances are good across the board, specifically Hugh Jackman. I mean, how cool is it that we got two different Wolverine movies in one single year? I didn't know it used to run a circus. That's awesome. I thought that was Nightcrawler's thing. Anyway, one of the other things I liked about this movie is it brings up tough subjects and introduces them to younger audiences. As a 28-year-old, I may have been asking a little bit too much out of a PG-rated movie to be a little darker and showcase the day-to-day -day struggles that the performers go through inside and outside of the performances. This is kind of wonder where some of my criticisms are fair or not, is because this movie is unapologetically about P.T. Barnum. And that's another issue that I have with it, is a lot of the side stories and side characters that could be very interesting to explore get pushed well, to the side. 
and it never really shows him in that much of a negative light. I'm sure he has selfish motives when he's first starting, but he's never really pushed on them. Even when things go wrong, it's never directly his fault, and every gamble he makes pays off. There has to be more to this character. But that being said, it is about him, and it's supposed to be a very positive movie for younger audiences, and I think it excels at that. I don't really know how much of this criticism is really relevant to the movie. Again, it is a movie very specifically about P.T. Barnum. And I don't think it really takes away anything. It was just something I thought of after the movie um, had ended when I was kind of debating how much I liked it. I think this movie is really, really great, and I highly recommend that people go see it. The other three movies I watched this week were Pitch Perfect 1, 2, and 3. I don't have a ton to say about each of these movies. I really, really enjoy them. Um, I think they have a great cast. I think they have great characters. I think they have good humor. They're charming. There's heart to it. Uh, if I had to pick a favorite, it would be number two, because it leads off with a Kesha verse and has the Green Bay Packers in it. That's right up Sean's alley. Sean loves Kesha, and Sean loves the Green Bay Packers. Like, loves them. Anyway, one is better than I remember, even though I do have some frustration with it. Specifically, Becca's dad's super annoying for no real reason. Two is, as I said, best in the series has a great combination of heart, charm, humor, really hits its stride. The music across all three is great. I think three is the weakest. Um, it has a strong, like, first 45 minutes to an hour, but it makes a weird turn towards the end that doesn't really work all that well, and I didn't think the story was super interesting. That being said, it does have a very, very sweet ending, and I think that if you like Pitch Perfect, you should check it out. Finally this week, we have a limited edition item that we'll talk about here in just a moment but first we'll look at a couple of new releases nothing much coming out in theaters this week it's january there's not typically a lot of good stuff that comes out unless it's oscar nominated stuff and that's all pretty much out at this point on blu-ray we have last flag flying which i don't think ever made it to spokane which is unfortunate because i wanted to see it i'll have to pick it up on blu-ray it's a uh, good cast in Brian Cranston, Steve Carell, and Lawrence Fishburne, and I'm very interested to see it. The other Blu-ray that's coming out this week that has some interest from me is Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman, uh, which is a movie about the creation of Wonder Woman. As for games, there's nothing, but I did miss one last week because I didn't know about it. A game called Celeste came out, and it's getting very good reviews. It's from the creators of Towerfall Ascension, which is a really, really, really great party game, and I'm looking forward to trying this particular game out sometime down the road. Now, for limited edition this week, we have chocolate-covered strawberry donuts. I covered all of that up. Chocolate-covered strawberry donuts. I'm not going to tell you how many packs I ate, because it's embarrassing, but uh, they're very good. I'm not going to open them, because it's like seven o'clock on a Monday and I don't need a sugar rush this late. These are fantastic, but it brings up a point that I think is really annoying. Why are you hiding these delicious strawberry covered things behind such a terrible holiday in Valentine's Day? Sell these year round. I'd, I'd stuff my face with these. These are delicious. These are delicious. Go get them while you can before they lock them away. We only have 31 sweet strawberry donut days before the government takes them away from us. Go get some. They're really good. They're really, really good. Thank you so much for joining me here on the second episode of Week in Review. Be sure to check back next Tuesday for more game and movie coverage. Uh, if you have a suggestion or a comment, or if I missed anything, go ahead and leave it down below. And while you're here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next week, but before we go, here's our very special musical guest. Thanks, Sean. I'm your special musical guest, Sean. And today I'll be performing Cups from the hit film Pitch Perfect 1.